Hey guys, this video is going to be going on our learning Japanese playlist, but it's probably going to be of interest to a few other people as well, even those who might be coming to Japan for a short time and who will be speaking English while they're here. Because it's about loan words and loan words are those words that probably should be called borrowed words but they're words that have come from other languages, uh, often from English, and then used in Japan. So sometimes they're used in the original uh, meaning that they had when they, were, when they were first brought here. So some examples of that would be things that have been made or invented in other countries and then brought here. So they're brought here and then, you know, we, Japanese people say, what's that? And they say, it's gasoline. So gasoline, Japanese people call it gasu, gasu, gasu. And the idea of a convenience store was brought here. So kombini, um, computer, internet, internet, internet. So with the exception of the fact that the pronunciation is different, uh, the meaning is basically the same. But what happens is, and we've talked about this with the Japanglish playlist before, which is probably where this will also go as well, this video. But the pronunciation, because of the katakana, unless you're used to hearing Japanese pronunciation of foreign words, it can lead to some major communication problems because these words, many of them you won't find in a Japanese dictionary. Uh, some of them you will, but many of them the ones that we're going to cover in a minute, many of them you won't. And the pronunciation is that much different that when you're not used to hearing it, you'll hear a word and you'll think, what is that? And then the Japanese person says to you, but it's English, you must know that word, it's English. And they say it again and they say it again and they say it again and you just can't get it. So for that reason, it, it can really be, it can get in the way of communication. So that those first examples, they're words that are brought here because that's, you know, computer was invented somewhere else and then it was brought here and then computer, okay, well, there we go. Or often Japanese people call them pasakon, but that's something else. Um, internet, oh, okay, and all the others. So same meaning, um, same meaning, and it's a new word brought to Japan. Fair enough. That happens in every country, doesn't it? Every language. Uh, the next one is ones that have the same uh, meaning and they're a replacement word. And this is this is a funny group. If these are words that have been brought here or made fashionable here uh, and actually used in place of Japanese words that already exist. So a couple of basics of those would be sutopu and sutato, which stop and start. And interestingly, that, that has become quite common to hear stop and start. So you're watching a game show on TV and hi, hi, stop, stop, okay, it's Nissan, start, and obviously there's start and stop words in Japanese already, but these ones are used. So it's sort of partly fashionable, partly to be cool. Um, some of those are a little bit sad, actually. There's, there's some on TV that some, if some famous person will use them as a catchphrase and then they catch on and other people start using them as well. There's some Japanese people that are really unhappy about this, actually, because um, they can see on their television and in their newspaper that words like this being used more and more often and they're not happy because they're saying, we've got Japanese words for this, why aren't we using them? And it's sort of a, an interesting point because it is a, a bit of a shame to see wor words like this used that sort of polluting the Japanese language a little bit, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is just to give you a heads up uh, because when you find yourself in a circumstance where you first start hearing sutopu or sutato or jushi, jushi, this, this food in this place is really good. The meat is very jushi. <laughs> that's juicy, right? Or or the food in this place is really good. It's very herusi, 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 herusi. And you look it up in your Japanese dictionary and you can't find the word. And you say, I'm sorry, I don't understand that Japanese word. And they say, it's English, herusi. So healthy, right? healthy. So, so lots of these. So this group is the same meaning, 
Uh, so they're being used in the same way that we use them, but they're being used as a replacement word to replace a Japanese word that already exists. Which is a bit of a shame, but anyway, that's what's happening. So again, the problem with these is you won't be necessarily expecting to hear them. And there's a lot more. We're only giving you three or four examples of each. But the reality is there's hundreds of them. You'll hear them every day. And if you're communicating with people in Japanese or in English, these will be, these can be a problem for you. So you're talking away in Japanese with someone and all of a sudden they use some word like this and you say, I don't know that one. And you didn't learn it because when they taught you Japanese, they didn't teach you this word because they taught you the, Ger the, the Japanese word. You know, you, you learn, when you learn Japanese at university or somewhere, they don't teach you sutopu, sutato, jushi, herusi. They teach you kenko and, you know, yamero and, and, and hajime and the Japanese words. So when you come here and you're speaking Japanese with someone and they start throwing in words like this, and there's a lot of them. So you just have to get used to, with these, the, the only way to really deal with them is get used to hearing when someone tells you, look, it's English, you should know that word. Then you have to translate it basically from katakana into, into proper English so you can work out what it is. I mean, sometimes easier than others, you know, things like banana, tomato is, is easy, but it's the more, it's, it's the trickier words that you're not expecting to hear that get pronounced totally differently that can be confusing. So, so there's the first two groups, the same meaning and the new word, the same meaning, the replacement word. So same meaning, new word, gas, computer, same meaning, replacement word, sutopu, sutato. Next one is an introduced word that's given a totally different meaning. And these are probably the ones that create the most confusion uh, for everybody, <laughs> for Japanese people and for English speaking people. Because for Japanese people speaking Japanese, they always, you know, these words get introduced. Sometimes it's through, often it's through television. Is you know, you get some talent, some some sort of famous person on Japanese TV will start using one. There's one guy that started saying, "Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God," on TV. So I don't know where he got it. He must have been watching some American TV or something, and he got, "Oh my God, uh, oh my God." So he started saying that on TV. And now we've got kids running around here saying it because they think it's cool, because they think he's cool. So it's a, well, it's a bit of a shame, but, but it happens. Um, and then they get caught on. And a lot of these things are like that. You know, the game shows stop, start. Probably that's what, how they got introduced into society here. And, you know, a lot of the others are the same. So, so this last group, different meaning words. These are the ones that cause a lot of confusion. So for example, you rock up in Japan, you meet some people, you talk to them for five minutes, and then one of them says to you, in English or in Japanese, tells, that you're, tells you that you're very sumato. You're very sumato. You know, hey, John-san, you are very sumato. And you, sumato? And they say, yeah, yeah, you know, sumato. It's an English word, you know, sumato. And you go, oh, smart. Oh, no, I'm not very smart. No, I don't know what you mean. And they're not telling you that you're smart, that you're you know, a good thinker, that you're wise. They're telling you that you're thin or slim. So when, when they tell somebody that they're sumato, it means that you're slim, it means your body is slim. So hey, you are very smarto, okay? Your body's slim. So it, it's possibly someone's misconstrued it. You know, sometimes in English we do say, if someone's nicely dressed and well presented and well groomed, sometimes, oh, you look very smart, don't we? Uh, he could be fat, <laughs> he could be fat, but if he's well presented and nicely groomed, sometimes we say, oh, you look very smart, don't we, sometimes in English. So it's possibly that, possibly at some time that's been misconstrued into meaning thin. So it means slim, Japanese people tell you slim. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, here's one that's on TV a lot, Tema. Tema, and here's a good example. Those of you who haven't heard this before, What's this mean? Tema. Tema. And you'll see it on Japanese t TV and they'll say, Kyo no, kyo no tema wa nani nani nani. So, Kyo no tema wa kono American no nani nani nani. Tema. Kyo no tema wa, kyo no tema wa sugoi mushuroi koto desu ne, kono nani nani nani. Tema. Tema. It's English, you know it. Tema. 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 Theme. <laughs> Theme. 
So it's almost used correctly, almost. You know, they'll say, Kyo no, today's tema, today's tema is, so it's all in Japanese, of course, today's tema is something, right? So it's sort of almost being used right, but really what they, really, if they want an English word, probably the English word used is topic, because it's more like, the way they use it is more the way that we'd use the word topic, not really the way we use the word theme. The topic of today's television show is this. But they say, kill on our team. Today's tema. Today's tema is, and they mean theme. So, uh, taipu. 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 You might recognize this one. Taipu. So this is sort of like, this video is becoming like a test. Can you pick the English word? We might call this video, can you pick the English word? Taipu. Taipu. Type. What type of person? What type of person? And because Japanese people like the type thing when it comes to personalities and different type, the different type of personalities. So they try to, they like to categorize people in different type. So they'll often say, ano hito wa, ano type, ano, ano otaku, o otaku, otaku no type, ano, ano sports, kare wa sports no type. Right, so that type, that type, that type. So again, probably won't find that in your Japanese dictionary, type, because most of these words have Japanese words that you can use instead, but these ones have just become the, the fashion. So, oh, here's another one. You'll get invited to somebody's to somebody's house, or you'll get, maybe not somebody's house, but you'll get invited to meet somebody at a restaurant. Um, let's go and have a morning goo. Morning, more, morning goo. Morning goo, what might that be? Morning goo. Morning goo, morning, breakfast. So you'll often walk into a, a restaurant and they'll tell you it's the morning goo menu. Morning goo menu, and it's morning. But they don't, it's not like the morning menu, it's morning is breakfast. And of course, asagohan is the Japanese word for breakfast. So again, there's a, there's a of course there's a Japanese word for breakfast, but morning goo has become the fashionable word for breakfast. You can see why some Japanese people are a bit upset about this. It is a bit of a shame that this, you know, this beautiful language that, that is Japanese is getting infested with these words that aren't necessary. I mean, words like gasoline and computer and convenience store and in internet and all that sort of thing is sort of inevitable, isn't it? And the same with every language. When there's new inventions, we take them on board. But it's a real shame that all these others, and again, this is just a small sample there's really hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. You hear them every day. This is just, we just wrote down a few of these in like five minutes because there's so many of them. So yeah, morning goo. Morning goo. What do you eat for morning goo? And it's the, yeah, it means breakfast. Um, sabi su. This is an interesting one. Sabi su. Some of you might recognize that word. Sabi su. You're going to a, into an izakaya or, or some restaurant and they'll bring you a bowl of something and put it down in front of you when you first sit down and put it down in front of you and say, it's sabi su. Sabi sir, sabi sir, and it means free. It means free. So the way the word service is used here means free. Now you can see why these lead to some confusion because the meanings, the meanings that they're being used for here are totally different from the real meaning in English. So not only will you not find it probably in your Japanese dictionary, most of these you probably won't find in your Japanese dictionary, but the English meaning is different as well, which can lead to all sorts of confusion. So you say to the staff, how much are these? And they say, sabesu, sabesu. So there's, of course, there's two or three words in Japanese for free, free of charge or, or complimentary or gift. There's a, there's a whole heap of words in Japanese for that. But uh, sabesu, sabesu. Oh, here's one. Wanu pisu, wanu pisu, wanu pisu, wanu pisu, wanu pisu, wanu pisu. No, no one is gonna get, if you haven't heard that before, I understand if you can't get that one. Wanupisu, wanupisu is a dress, is a dress. So skirt, skirt, and then dress. So if you think about one piece, one piece dress, one piece dress, so it's just a dress, normal dress. Wanupisu. So instead of instead of a skirt with a top sort of thing, it's a dress, it's a wanupisu, right? One piece, one piece. Which when you tell a Japanese girl that a one piece is actually usually a one-piece swimming costume in English, and that a wanupisu is actually a dress, then, they, then it's their turn to be confused. <laughs> they tell you they're going to come to the party wearing a wanupisu, and you say, really? 
Really? One apiece, sir. Oh, oh, okay, I'm with you now. Um, oh, the next, the last two, the next two and the last two are actually really important, these ones, because uh, these can cause all sorts of confusion. One of them is my, my, nanny, 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 my car. And usually they link it with another English word that they don't need to use as well. So, of course, my, um, my jumper, my shoes, my car, my pen, uh, of course, there's Japanese words for that. Um, and the way they use it here is, so for example, there was actually a time where, where I was invited to an event and I said, how are we going to travel there? And the guy said, we're going to travel, now speaking Japanese, and he said, we're going to travel by my car. We're going to travel by my car, and, I, and, and which of course then leads you to think that we're going in his car, doesn't it? Because he says, you know, oh, do you be what? My car debt. Nani, 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 right? So, okay, we're going in his car. No, that's not what it means. The way they use my is for one's car. So, and of course, they have the words in Japanese for that. Jibun no. Jibun no. Wai wai no. Jibun no. So, <clears throat> instead of saying the Japanese words, and kuruma, obviously, for car, instead of saying that, my car. And this has actually become quite common, quite fashionable. My car, we're traveling by my car. Now that actually means each person is getting there by their own car. Each person is taking their own car. Now you can see how that can, can create some confusion. Because you make an appointment with someone on Saturday, we're gonna meet at 10 o'clock, and we're gonna go by my car. And you're thinking, right, we're going in his car. No, that's not the plan. We're all taking our own car, which is confusing, isn't it? <laughs> really confusing. And, and, it, and there's a lot of those recently. So my cup. There was one one recently. There was some event, and you had to you had to have my cup. They said you have to have my cup, and it, it means each individual had to have their own cup with them because there was some plan at the event for us all to drink something. So make sure you bring my cup. It's just it's unfortunate. You know you can really see why some Japanese people are unhappy about this because it it, not, it doesn't add anything to the language. It just makes it a little bit less beautiful and more confusing. Not so much for Japanese people because they're all using these the same way, so they're not getting confused. But when they come to speak to, Jap to English speakers or foreigners who have only learnt Japanese and haven't, uh, haven't learnt, you know, the, this Japanglish, <laughs> they get confused. So the other one, this is a big one as well, sign, sign. And often what they'll do is they'll hand you a piece of paper and a pen and they'll say, please sign. One example is the post office when they make deliveries to your house. Is if, if there's something that needs to be signed for, they'll give you a box and they'll give you a piece of paper and give you a pen and say, sign. Which I think most of you guys, unless you've experienced this in Japan, would just take the pen and sign your name, wouldn't you, with a signature? And if you do that, they look at it and they go, oh, that's no good. Because they can't read it. What they're actually asking you to do is to write your name. And, and this can happen with the post office, but it can happen with the bank as well. It can happen at City Hall. It can happen all sorts of places and sometimes really important and sometimes on really important documents. And they give you something and they give you a pen and say, sign. And you go, oh, okay, I understand that one. Boom, 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 boom. And they look at it and they go, no, 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 no. That's no good. We can't read that. So what they're actually asking you to do is to print your name. Because as you guys know, usually Japanese people use incarns and people who live here long term usually have an incarn as well have a stamp and we stamp things so we put our stamp on it and and this is just a way of writing your name as well as the stamp and because quite often even when we use an incarn we'll put the incarn and i'll say okay incarn here and boof and then i'll say and please sign here and in japanese right but the the word sign is used they don't say and again they can say in japanese please write your name and if they say in Japanese, please write your name, then you write your name, you know? And that it's not so confusing. But what they'll often do now, it's become fashionable for them to say, sign, please sign. Sign kudasai, kokore. Sign kudasai. And you go, okay. Just, oh, that's no good, I can't read it. So if you get asked in Japan to sign something, it actually means write your name. So you can see that this is huge. Now, what triggered this video was a, a, a person who writes regularly on our Japan Channel forum uh, brought this topic up recently, and that triggered this video. So 
what we're going to do is we'll, she's already put a list of these on the Japan Channel forum. So we'll put a link underneath this video to that thread or to that forum. And then anybody else who's been to Japan who wants to contribute some more of these, because there's hundreds of them, um, is welcome to contribute some more. And we'll make a big list of these loan words, borrowed words. You can see they're not really loan. Loan gives the impression that they're brought here and they're the same word and they're treated the same way. But as you can see, they're brought here and they're re-sprayed and changed around into different pronunciation and different meaning and totally different. So they're sort of rebuilt words. But um, we'll, we'll put a list on the, on the Japan Channel Forum because it, it, they are, some of them particularly, as you can see with the last couple, pretty important. Uh, and give people a bit of an idea of what they're up against. First of all, if you're going to be speaking Japanese in Japan, or even if you're just visiting and speaking English in Japan, because you get an English-speaking Japanese person, and they don't know that they're not real English. So even if a Japanese person can speak English you know, reasonably well, they'll use some of these and confuse the heck out of you, because you'll think they're speaking English to you, and they throw in a few of these with totally different meanings, tell you that tomorrow we're going to take my car, we're going to go over there, You'll turn up in the morning without a car, they'll say, where's your car? <laughs> As an example. So Anyway, all fun. So again, the link will be underneath here. So have a look at the uh, Japan Channel Forum and we'll, we'll see if we can get some more of these together for you. More videos coming soon.